and welcome back. Now today we're finally going to be talking about this UPS battery pack that uh, Banggood sent me and that I mentioned in a previous video to see how well the Raspberry Pi could cope with um, well a battery, that one there in fact that came with this pack and uh, what are the caveats we need to know about this board and the eagle eyed amongst you have probably already seen there's a couple of wires I've soldered on here because I've had to modify the behaviour of this board a little bit using the AT Tiny 85 that we used also in the last video on battery packs and um, well a smaller modification but we'll come on to that in a bit more detail in just a little while now let's talk about the pack as it comes out the box okay so you get this this pack without the extra wires incidentally um, and that obviously plugs onto your pie at the back uh, a nice spare flat surface here on which to mount your battery there's a little bit of double-sided tape on there so that goes on there like that now the capacity of this it says is 2600 which may or may not be true who can tell these days um, anecdotal evidence though indicates that this would run the raspberry pi by itself for several hours and the feedback on the banggood site also indicates roughly the same obviously if you're drawing two amps out of this then it's only going to last you just over the hour isn't it but um i haven't put that into any kind of real test it's just what i've noticed while i've been playing about now first things first then let's have a look at the banggood website and see how much this sort of thing costs there we are now that's not a particularly bad price is it considering that um, the full cost of an official raspberry pack i think it's official or whether i don't know anyway you can buy them for 50 quid and they work out the box no modification required great and i'm sure they're selling by the truckload however for in this case 12 pound 22 and that price does go up a little bit depending on the exchange rate this is a viable alternative in my humble opinion now you do have to make a couple of little tiny modifications but if you're on a raspberry pi and or arduino fan this this is the project for you believe me okay now last time we looked at the at tiny being plugged onto the raspberry pi because it wouldn't restart after a power failure and we're going to reuse that entire circuit a bit later on in the video so let's look at how it works out of the box and um, well how well or badly this works so this is the geek worm power pack okay and as i say banggood supply this now there's one important thing on here if i scroll down there's a nice little picture of it here we are so this is a nice little picture let me just move that sideways a little bit there we are now one of the things it's it's mentioning here is that we have i squared c output capabilities what you can do is interrogate this device as we're going through we're not going to be doing that on this video um, that will spill over into some future video because what you can say is what percentage of the battery pack is left um, in other words you know are you half full or whatever and decide whether or not to shut down that's a different focus to where i'm going from today okay so let's go back to the to the workshop there we are now as i say this this comes like this okay without the wires obviously it comes with this battery it comes with some standoffs that um brass ones now, unfortunately i can't use those because my raspberry pi is mounted on this nice perspex board with a breadboard next to it right, for you know demo and experimentation purposes and indeed you may well have one like that as well um, as you've probably noticed i do run my operating system off a, a mini um well, not a mini usb it's a mini device anyway, that little thing so that has got my operating system on rather than an sd card the downside is that you'll find it slightly slower to boot because what happens is as you boot up um, it tries to interrogate the sd card and there's not one there and it gives it a good go to see if it's going to respond ever before it goes i'll oh, look somewhere else um, the other one is that is just for a wireless mouse so let's um, connect this up then and um, well see what happens right i'm just about to connect up the pi then so this is to the power this is just the standard um pi wall wart thing that came with my pi originally so we connect that up oh yes it's the other way around to the board which is slightly annoying 
So immediately you can see these blue lights starting to well go up one by one indicating it's charging the battery packs. That battery pack has hardly been used by me because I've been concentrating on a little tiny one just for experimentation purposes. So what's happening is this is charging up but um, hmm, there's a little red light that should be on here and of course the Raspberry Pi should have a little light on here indicating it's getting power and of course it isn't at the moment. Now we covered this in the previous video in some detail. You've got to press that button. There's a, there's a button on the side there. See that one there of this hat and you've got to press that in order to well effectively turn it on I suppose. So we hold it, wait for the red light to come on. There it is. Red light came on here and now if you look at the other end you'll see that the Pi is also on and flashy flashy green lights it's interrogating the SD card and or um, micro USB device here. Fine let's um, call up VNC viewer then to see what it looks like. It takes as I say a little while to boot doesn't it anyway and uh, we'll just see what effect if any this is going to have. Right and there you can see a nice big picture of the Raspberry Pi home screen I guess you'd call it okay using BNC viewer so that you don't actually need a screen on your Raspberry Pi in fact today I disconnected my old PC monitor from it it was um, a 19 inch monitor a 4.3 format that um, I happened to have lying about and I just I've just taken it off the desk now it's just been too big and I was looking for a much smaller one and of course I have a tablet type Windows 10 PC brilliant works like a dream the only time you're going to need an actual wired monitor either through the HDMI port or the the socket on the Pi for the monitor is when things go wrong because you don't know what's happening if you can't connect if this VNC viewer now didn't connect how would you know what's happening what messages are you getting on screen so that's the time when you do need some kind of monitor to plug in and you can get all sorts of um, small monitors 8 9 10 inch that plug into the HDMI and can stand there on your desk very small or the smaller ones that plug on to here I say here it's being hidden by, by this at the minute but uh, plug it onto the the Pi as a hat right enough of that then so what we can see here is that Pi is running now I'm going to shrink this down because it's it's capturing too much of the screen at the moment so let me just bring that nice and small there we are it's just to show really that it's it's running uh, nothing else there and if I move this over here we'll see what's going on here as well that's just the battery at the back now if we disconnect the battery not the battery the power what would you expect to happen and the answer is not a lot four lights suddenly appear here I don't know why that is when the power goes off all lights come on here because I think what it's showing now is how much power is left in the battery but as you can see it's all working I can go on to my VNC viewer and uh, call up you know things it's all hunky-dory working there we are great so if you had a minor dropout in your house or beehive greenhouse water storage tank location whatever it is your pie would happily keep running until you reconnect the power so if we reconnect the power now must make sure to get this the right way around so we reconnect and it goes back into sort of charging mode down here as you can see and your, your Raspberry Pi is unaware that in fact you were running off power battery power that is so what happens though and if you watch my last video you'll know the answer to this what happens if the Raspberry Pi has to now run on battery power because you've had a power cut of some kind and the power doesn't come on in time before this battery is depleted well I'll, I'll tell you what happens briefly this will keep running until the voltage on the 5 volt pin over here drops to something like 4.4 volts of that ilk and then the Raspberry Pi will crash what then happens is that the Raspberry Pi will try and boot up again because if I turn this over again you'll find that the the Pi still has power being applied to it it's just not enough so the the Linux kernel and all that tries to reboot uh, gets to the point where it wants to fire up the GUI 
and hasn't got enough power to do so so it, it crashes again and then tries to reboot again it does this until there really is no power left in this battery whatsoever so at the moment i think it's still quite happily running yeah still doing stuff that's that's fine and as i say um, anecdotal evidence indicates that th this particular battery would run for several hours if you weren't doing too much with it or if you were taking a couple of amps then maybe an hour which is quite a long time to have a power cut isn't it well it's a long time in the uk to have a power cut even to have any kind of power cut but to have one that lasts two or three hours is quite rare but i know there are certain parts of the world where power cuts are not uncommon i've been to those parts you can have a power cut for three hours and suddenly it goes off and everybody sits there sweltering because the air conditioning's failed and they just wait for it to come back on again so yeah it all depends where you are in the world of course as to how useful you may perceive this to be but even a, a small dip a brown out if you like for a second or two could cause your pi normally to crash but at least with a battery like that it won't it'll just carry on as normal now to speed things up a bit i've actually got a little tiny battery we've used this before this one here now this is only 100 milliamps nominal capacity um, i've been abusing it a fair bit on here you know making it go flat all the rest of it so what i'm going to do is swap the battery out purely to show you what happens with this because obviously this goes flat really quickly and i don't let it charge all the way up just a couple of minutes just because i was we, we were waiting forever for this and even if i did speed up the video i've got to sit here waiting for something to happen so i'm going to disconnect this battery connect this one up instead and then we'll see, we'll see what happens when this battery goes dead okay back in a bit right the battery is connected and it is pretty flat which is why we're getting this vnc server error um, no lights are on in fact if i try and turn the power on nope i'm holding the button down you should hold it down. i think it's for three or four or five seconds something like that nothing okay so it's flat from my previous ex experiments so what we'll do we'll plug in the power and charge it up enough you know over a minute or two just to make it bootable this is really awkward having it upside down that so what's happening now of course it's charging up the power because it was flat totally and utterly this has sprung into life and the raspberry pi is also alive now that's going to take a little while to boot up so just let it boot up and uh, we'll be back when that's happened and there we are so that just suddenly sprung into life so once again if we disconnect the power now nothing happens i mean it's still running because that, even that little tiny charge it's had there over the last minute or so um, is enough so i can call this up yeah the raspberry pi is still functioning um, just keep an eye on these four leds though because it's such a tiny battery it does um, deplete itself very very quickly the raspberry pi when it starts up needs something of the order of 600 milliamps just to boot so with this one being 100 milliamp hours and it's not even charged i mean you're lucky to get 10 minutes out of this but for our purposes we'll get enough what i want to show you is what happens when this gets low enough for the raspberry pi to crash now it's still running at the moment and the way to test it of course is making sure all these things respond to the mouse you can see the icons are highlighting that's good so we'll just sit here until well until it crashes Well, it's dropped one LED now already, so it won't be long before I think another one goes off, and that's it. Well, we'll just be patient and wait. Right, in fact, as you can see, it's, it's suddenly died on us. Now, if we look at the um, Raspberry Pi, that's probably dead as well. Yep, that's dead as well. So let's reconnect the power then. We assume some time has gone by and the power is now being reconnected. So this is now charging up again, as you can see. There's no red light on here though which means that this is not supplying five volts to the raspberry pi and we know that because if we measure this five volts here there is nothing and indeed the lights on the top nothing so just imagine the situation now that you're monitoring a let's let's not let's not use the beehive example anymore you're measuring the water level in a water tank say and every hour or two hours or something is supposed to measure it and send you a message when it's getting low so the power's gone off 
you're not too worried because you've got a battery pack but the power stays off for quite some time the power then comes back on starts recharging the battery great but nothing's going to go and press that switch unless you go and press it yourself all right and your monitoring device your pi plus all this might be in the box you know 30 40 feet up in the air up a ladder or something who knows so what do we do and yes if you've watched my previous video on this you'll know that we used an at tiny 85 to bring the pin on the raspberry pi it's labeled pen on the 3b plus pen stands for power enable and it would force the pi to restart even though it was sitting there in a dormant state well that's that's not going to work this time though is it because the pi is not powered at the moment so if we were to connect this up as we did last time the even the at tiny would not work because the at tiny has no five volts at this pin here so the at tiny isn't running the pi is not running nothing's going to run so what we have to do is take the power where it comes in here when power is re-established at the socket here then we can fire up the AT Tiny 85 and detect whether the Raspberry Pi is running by looking at a particular GPIO pin that runs a tiny little program and sets it to high and that's why these cables here have been soldered onto this board to allow us to do that it's only two cables because you can get the ground over here on these pins no trouble right the times come, I think, to dig out the AT Tiny 85, reconnect it the way it should be, and we'll show you how you don't have to climb up a ladder and press that button every time there's a power cut and your battery's gone dead. Back in a jiffy. Right, this is the AT Tiny 85 connected up pretty much as we did in video 122. A couple of little modifications we have to do, but it's really simple stuff. Okay, so this AT Tiny 85 is monitoring. GPIO pin 21 that's on this yellow lead here because when the Raspberry Pi fires up one of the very first things it does is set that pin high or a little tiny script that I showed you in um, video 20, 121 but we'll go through that again um, if we've got time okay so anyway that's what it's monitoring right is the Raspberry Pi alive when I'm alive that's what it's saying and if it is alive Instead of bringing the power enable pin low on the Raspberry Pi as we did last time, this time it's bringing that push switch low on the edge there, that one there, that little tiny button, see that? That's the one that has to be pressed, but that's the one that uh, is now connected to this green wire coming out here. Okay, And what we're going to do is ground it at the back here, we ground that via that transistor and the AT Tiny 85. I'll show you the circuit diagram, all will become clear. Let's see it in operation then and what it actually enables us to do. So we're going to power up the um, Raspberry Pi via the UPS, right? So we're not sticking the power into the Raspberry Pi directly. So we're going to put it in there, right? Now, as you can see, it's immediately charging up the little tiny battery at the back there. But that's it nothing's happening we've we've seen that before nothing happens at all so the 80 tiny 85 has said oh look there's no power on here and the, the, rather the raspberry pi hasn't put you know a high on this pin and oh now it's look it's gone out it's going to bring that pin low and lo and behold at the back here this has gone red which means if i flip it up you should see Yes, the Raspberry Pi now has power and it's doing its thing. So if I bring back the Raspberry Pi VNC window, so it's trying to connect, we should see without, without any jiggery pokey, pokery on my part, um, it should just, well, it will just work. We know that. So the AT Tiny 85, because it, it suddenly woke up, because power had been applied via the standard usb thing and that's what we've got this wire connected to the positive of that usb plug that then powers the at tiny 85 that then wakes up and it goes i'm awake how come the raspberry pi hasn't got anything on this pin it waits for 30 seconds as it did last time and it goes there's still nothing on that pin that pi is probably asleep or dead not not running basically 
So what it then does, as I say, via that transistor and the output from the AT Tiny 85 is bring that switch at the back there low for about five seconds because it does need a long push. You might get away with three, but you might as well be safe. So the AT Tiny brings it low for five seconds. That goes high, fires up the Pi itself. Bob's your uncle. Now I'm expecting VNC to connect pretty soon actually, but that's it's almost like the icing on the cake. We don't really need to see that because we know the Pi is actually booting up just by looking at the uh, flashy, flashy green there at the back. Look, see that? So, what is this this new circuit? The AT Tiny 85, of course, is is just the same. Same three pins we're using: P0, one, and two. It's being powered now, though, from as I said, the positive of that USB connector. So when the power dies, it dies as well. But when the power comes back up, it will spring into life and then interrogate what's happening on this pin here. So let's look at the modifications that I've had to do to this board. I mean, they are simplicity itself, and they're exactly the same ones that Tinkerman did on his, although I've chosen slightly different points to take um, these wires from because it was so much easier. First of all, the uh, the positive we're taking from the USB socket now, and this entire pad here, all the way around here, right up to that first pin on this IC, is all the positive supply coming in. Now Tinkerman's taking it from that very first pin on the IC, and that was I thought that's a bit tricky. So all I did was scrape a bit of um, of this uh, covering, this red, what is it, varnish stuff off this PCB. There's probably a technical term. I don't know what it is. Uh, scraped it off and just soldered the red wire on there. And the other one is the uh, the other side of the switch. So here's the switch. One side is ground, and this side is the bit you want to be able to ground programmatically. Now I've used a dew point cable here as you can see just to get in there. Now I first of all wetted the the little contact on the board. Um, I've got some pictures actually before I put this on. I'll, I'll stick these in now. There we are. Look, you can see the picture of what it was like before I put it on and this is now what it looks like um, with it soldered on. I just took this DuPont cable, bent the end down a little bit so it make it a lot easier to solder on there and it literally took a quarter of a second. That's not brilliant soldering actually looking at it now but it will, it will do for this. And then what I've done here is just put um, a cable tie on for um, strain relief So because obviously we don't want you know, to be pulling on this or this so that just sort of holds it in place without getting in the way of these mounting holes should you want to put that on as a proper hat on your pie. So that's it. Very simple, straightforward. Takes about five minutes, really. No problem at all. So let me draw you out a slightly modified circuit compared to last time in, in 122. OK, circuit diagram. Here we go. They're still not um, connected, is it? I wonder why. Hmm. Probably taking a bit longer. Or maybe I'll have to do it again. Oh. What you can't see, but I can see on my monitor, there's a timeout. So I'm going to say OK to that. It's killed it. And I've got to actually start it up again. So let me just call up VNC. Right, there it goes. Oh, oh it's connected instantly. Look, there we are. Right, OK, let me show you the circuit diagram of this. Simplicity itself, believe me, anybody can do this. It's just a few wires. And suddenly this 12-pound UPS device that works OK until the battery dies suddenly works all the time. For the use of a, a £1.50 80 tiny. Got to be good, isn't it? Circuit diagram, here it comes. Right, this is a partial circuit that I've drawn out. Um, pretty much so far, as we did last time, we have an AT tiny here uh, driving an indicator LED that's got nothing to do with the circuit, really, just so that we can see what's going on because you can't get the serial stuff out here very easily. Um, let's not go into that, that's a different topic. P0 is still monitoring GPIO 21, that's fine. Now P1, instead of going on to the PEN connector on your board, this time has got to go on to the Geekworm worm switch. This is the little switch on the side, and it goes to Earth internally. So what we're going to do is connect to this side here, there, and what we're going to do is actually bring that in to a transistor, 
Um, it's a pity I've drawn it that way around, really. We'll do that again. So this is a standard MPN transistor. And that goes to ground down here. Common ground, as usual. So all the grounds have to connect up, whether it's from the Geek Worm, the Pi, or the AT Tiny. Um, so this is a standard MPN. I think I've used a 2N2222 or something like that. Any standard MPN will do there, though. That's um, Now, what did I put in for the base? Oh, I would have thought something like a 10K. Oh, here it is. Let's have a look. In fact, what I've used for the base here, a bit unusually perhaps, is 330 ohms. Now that's the sort of value you'd normally use if you had an LED, which is probably why it's still stuck on the circuit board. Doesn't matter, you won't overdrive this transistor because there's no current running. What we're doing is shorting that bit of the switch on the UPS down to ground via this. Now this is interesting actually because normally if you want to short something down to ground properly you might have to use a MOSFET because MOSFETs have such a low internal resistance it really is ground. In this case there's probably still a few hundred ohms or thereabouts um, resistance in this transistor but it makes no odds it still manages to ground that sufficiently and it all works maybe because we're really driving it hard through this 330 ohm resistor but whatever it works well enough now this is exactly the same method that Tinkerman used if you remember in the in video 122 I said can I really use an AT tiny 85 I was drawing logic diagrams and a couple of NAND gates and whatnot and I thought this is ridiculous and that's when I scoured the internet saw that Tinkerman dealt with his exact same board he also wanted to do this but he developed his own little PCB and everything else and so I, we diverged at that point but when it comes to actually grounding this this is the mechanism he used I don't know if he used the same transistor or the base or whatever but it's it's got to be more or less the same hasn't it for it to work and that is it that is the the circuit as a whole now your USB power this is the power that would normally plug into the Pi but in fact you're plugging it into the Geekworm UPS instead okay and that's it that is it the sketch I've upload I'll upload the um, sketch again onto the github it's a little bit different because we're bringing this high here sorry yeah we're bringing this high for five seconds now last time we brought I think the um, pen pin on here down for about one second that was long enough but not in this case that switch has got to be a long press so we're talking about five seconds thereabouts five seconds always seems to work and what else um, well yes the other thing is of course we're initially bringing this GPIO pin here low as soon as it starts up because we don't want this to close this switch immediately it has to interrogate this first so initially this P1 is now going to be low and only when the logic dictates that hang on this pin here isn't high the Pi probably isn't running give it 30 seconds no it's still not running that's when we make this high so we get a nice long pulse of five seconds and back down to low again and that's about it really I mean there's nothing more to say except there's a very very important thing that you must pay attention to when I received this kit from Banggood as I said it came with the board and this battery uh, separately well in the same package but you know it wasn't wrapped up with this one now I plugged all this in trying to get it to work and when I disconnected the power it just died immediately even though the blue flashy flashy LEDs here were all flashing and things no it didn't work and it was only by a bit of trial and error and looking at the Banggood website that I thought, hang on a minute, these power cables on here were not the right way round. Now we had that trouble before, if you remember, and um, one of my little devices sort of went up in a puff of smoke due to that. So I think I was pretty lucky to dodge the bullet this side. If we look at the Banggood website again with that actual product on it, here we are. So this is what I went back to and as you can see there quite clearly when the product is header up if you like the power is on the left. Now if you compare that um, to the actual workbench here I'm going to have to disconnect this in order to show you what I'm talking about. So there's the board in the same orientation as uh, this one here right and you see the powers on the left the positives on the left um, over here 
Now, when you look at this now, this battery goes in with the slot uppermost, that little bit there, and as you can see, the power is on the left. However, when I bought it, it was the other way around. Now, here's one. I've got a pack of these, all pre-wired. And as you can see, when the slot goes in, the power positive is on the right, which is the exact opposite to what this board is expecting. And I don't know if there's some kind of de facto standard that's not being adhered to. I know a couple of you put comments saying it's up to you which way around you do it. But then why are manufacturers supplying them like this and yet boards like this expect them the other way around? Anyway, so I've had to change this, carefully teasing those things out and putting them back right, the right way. I had to do it for my little power pack as well, that one there. Right, so it went in the right way. And uh, this one at the back, which I've I used just for playing about with, that is also now the right way. But it might not be the right way for other devices. So what I'd say is be very, very careful about what you plug in and make sure that the polarity of your device is that that it's expecting. Don't assume that it's been wired up the correct way. OK. Um, that's it then. So what I think we've done now, we've we've turned this device here from Banggood, uh, well Geek Worm really I suppose, we've turned this device from, you know, an eight, uh, no it wasn't 18, it was 12 pounds wasn't it? So it's very cheap, plus maybe a couple of quid tops for the 80 tiny 85, a little bit of soldering, a transistor in this device now of course, transistor, a couple of resistors, diode, and that's it. So now we've got a really good UPS that will force your Pi to start up again once the power's reapplied if the battery's gone flat in the meantime. Perfect. Working 100%. What could possibly go wrong? Don't say it. Don't write in. It's going to work. Have a go. All right. Oh, by the way, um, there is an affiliate link to this device, this £12.22 device, um, in the video description below, which does mean that if you do click on it and then order something, um, commission is assigned to me. Put your comments, queries, observations in the video below this. Remember, YouTube likes it when you do that, and I'll do my very best to respond to them all. Okay, thanks very much for watching, and see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose, and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.